Welcome to this new series on a look at the biblical prophets. Well, in session one, we are going to ask this important question. What is the message of the prophets for us in 21st century? What is the message of the prophets for us today? I would like to take us through four key points this evening. Number one, the mission. What is the mission of the prophets? What is the content of the prophecies they preached? And what is the pattern that you can see in all the prophets? And few reflections for us this evening. We all know that the biblical prophetic books can be divided into two. One is major prophet, another is the minor prophets. We have four major prophets. Most of us are familiar with it. That is Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel and Daniel. But the most ignored or very less looked upon books are the minor prophets starting from Hosea till Malachi. So during this series of our study, we're going to look into these 12 minor prophets and draw a few important lessons for us today in this 21st century. Now, let's look at the mission of the prophets. As we look at the mission of the prophets, I want you to remember three R's, especially the mission of the minor prophets are of threefold. Number one, you will see that all the prophets encourage the disobedient people to repent from the sin. The first R is repent. You look at any prophetic book, there will be always an invitation for them to repent from their sinful ways. That's number one. And number two, you will see the prophets encourage the wayward people, the disobedient people to return to God. There is always an invitation from the prophets inviting the people to return unto God because they went behind other false gods. So the prophets encourage the wayward people to return unto him. Number one is repent from your sins and number two is written to God and number three that you would see in the minor prophets is the prophets encourage the people to remember that God will ultimately triumph God will ultimately win over the evil and the sinful nations so three R's are the threefold mission of the minor prophets. Number one is an invitation for people to repent. And number two, it is an invitation for the wayward people to return unto God. And number three is to people need to remember that God will ultimately be the one who will win over the sin and the evil nations. So this day, as we look at the mission of the prophets, I want us to remember this day how you and I can also relate to this prophetic message, to this mission of the prophets. Are there anything that you and I need to repent of this day? Is there anything that you and I need to return from to the Lord? And you and I need to be reminded once again this day that our God is sovereign and he will ultimately triumph over evil. And as you look at the mission of the prophet, they are always twofold. The message of the prophets are always twofold. Number one, they proclaim the word of God. That is number one. And on the other side, they prophesied. So whenever the prophets preach, they preach the word of God. The prophets reminded the people about the word of God given through his dear servants. And on the other side, the prophets prophesied about the coming judgment. The prophets prophesied about the state and the condition of the people. Now, this can be divided into two. Number one, it is foretelling and the other one is forthtelling. Right? The foretelling is prophesying, speaking about the future. However, foretelling is speaking about the past and the present situation. And when you take the prophetic books, you would always remember and you will always notice that most of the prophets were foretelling. That is, they were pointing out to the people about the past, 
what god did in the past and how god redeemed them in the past and how god made covenant with them in the past and by looking at the past the prophets also reminded and pointed fingers at the people saying look at your present condition who you are and what you are doing so biblical prophets were not of foretellers because most of the times whenever we think about prophets in biblical times and prophets of the present times we always expect prophets to be foretellers but the biblical prophets are completely different most of the time they were foretellers not foretellers right so they reminded people about the covenant and always warned the people to return back to the covenant that they made with god so the threefold mission of the prophets are repent return and remember that your god will ultimately triumph and let us be once again reminded of it number 2 let us look at the content of the prophet what was the prophetic content what was the message of the prophets the message of the prophets can be divided into five number 1 it was proclaiming the judgment that would come upon the people because of the sinfulness and number 2 will be the prophetic warning is always followed by an identification the description of sins so god is going to bring this judgment and people are informed about the sins which has resulted in this impending judgment this coming judgment so the coming judgment and the sins that has invited this judgment and number 3 there will be having identified with the sins the prophets then announce the judgment describe about the judgment so number 1 would be the coming judgment and number 2 would be the sins behind the judgment and number 3 there will be a description about the coming judgment a clear pictorial representation of the coming judgment and number 4 after this judgment and the description of the judgment is given you will see that it is followed by a call for repentance the prophets always proclaim the call of repentance to people because that is the beauty of god once you repent the fifth is the blessing that would come upon people if they repent from their sins so i want you to remember the fivefold uh, content of the prophets the impending the coming judgment number 1 and number 2 will be the sins that caused this coming judgment and number 3 you will see that the prophets proclaim the description about the coming judgment and fourthly god doesn't stop there because most of the times whenever we talk about the old testament whenever we talk about the prophetic books most of the people stop with the judgment but you know what the beauty of god in the bible is god is gracious throughout the revelation that we see in the scriptures so he is god of grace in the old testament as he is in the new testament so every time a judgment is proclaimed god comes out with compassion and mercy upon his people and invites them to repent and as people repent you will see the fifth one is the future deliverance and the blessings that would come as a result of their repentance however if they don't repent definitely there will be judgment if they repent then definitely there is blessing so as these fivefold pattern that you would see in the prophetic messages there is also some of the key themes that you can see in the minor prophets number 1 there is always a call some of the themes are there is always a call for the holiness of god number 2 there is always an emphasis on the sovereignty of god and number 3 there is always this emphasis on the eternal word of god and number 4 there is always an invitation for people to repent from the sin and finally there is always a call for true worship because a true worship is not any external act rather an internal change unless your heart changes there is 
no true worship a true worship births out of your inner change so that is what is expected in the old testament that's what jesus interprets in john chapter 4 saying god expects worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth because that is not an outward expression that comes forth from inner man that is expressed outside right so these are the five content that you can see in the prophetic books and the prophetic messages and number 3 what i want us to look at is the pattern of the prophetic messages if you look at the 12 prophets that we see uh in the minor prophets and also the major prophets you will see they can be divided into five different patterns number 1 many of the prophets were basically concerned with two major events right most of the prophets were concerned with two major events they were either concerned with the assyrian captivity or the babylonian captivity So the Assyrian captivity happened in 722 BC and prophets like Isaiah, Amos, Micah and Hosea speak and warn the people about this coming invasion by the Assyrians which eventually happened in 722 BC. And whereas the second major event that we see in the history of Israel is the Babylonian captivity. where prophets like jeremiah ezekiel zephaniah habakkuk they all talk about the babylonian captivity how the babylonians would come and attack and take these people as captives so two major events the assyrian captivity in 722 bc and the babylonian captivity in 586 87 bc so this is the first pattern that you will see some of the prophets talk about the assyrian captivity some of the prophets talk about the babylonian captivity and there are another group of prophets especially three prophets who are concerned with post exilic events that is prophets such as haggai and zechariah they talk about the rebuilding of the temple however prophets like malachi they talk about the uh, rebuilding of the walls and the rebuilding of the walls of jerusalem So you see here three prophets are concerned about post exilic events two are concerned about rebuilding the temple and one is concerned about the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem so one group talks about what happens before captivity one group of prophets talk about what happens after captivity and there is third group of prophets who talk about what happened during the exile the prophets are daniel and ezekiel they are the prophets who lived during exile and they talk about they preach about what happened during exile that is before during and after exile right so this is the third pattern that you would see and the fourth pattern are there were some prophets who were sent to preach to the neighboring nations not to judah not to israel but to the neighboring nations around like the most common prophet that we all know is jonah jonah was sent to a neighboring nation that is he was sent to nineveh the capital of assyria right and we also know obadiah was sent to edom and nahum was sent to nineveh so you see another group of prophets who were sent outside the chosen people of god they were sent to the neighboring nations because that indicates that god of the bible he is not just the god of israel and judah he is god of all people he is god of all creation and finally there are few prophets uh, like joel and obadiah we cannot exactly state the dates but there are another group of prophets who bring in a very stern message of the lord of repentance so you see a five pattern one pattern of prophets are those who speak about two major events babylon and as babylon and assyrian captivity another group of prophets speak about what happened after the exile that is after they returned from exile from babylon and number 3 some prophets speak about what happened during exile and number 4 some prophets speak about the prophetic message for the neighboring nations and these are some of the key patterns that we can see as we read through the prophetic books now 
one of the key things i would like to highlight this day is looking at the prophetic message and the covenants you will see a very close connection between the prophetic messages that were preached and the covenant for example the abrahamic covenant is mentioned close to 16 times in the prophetic books which means every time prophets came and preached they always reminded the people about the god who made covenant with their forefather abraham and how he has fulfilled those promises and how god has been faithful to his word not just that there is almost close to 1100 reference to mosaic covenant that is the covenant that god made with the people of israel at mount sinai so what does that indicate that god is god of covenant and he expects his people to be faithful to the covenant that he has made with them so abrahamic covenant is mentioned close to 16 times sinai covenant or the mosaic covenant is mentioned close to 1100 times and the promises that we see especially in the book of deuteronomy are referred to close to 430 times in the prophetic books referring to if you obey you will experience these blessings if you don't keep the covenant you will experience these judgments and these punishments from god and number 4 you also see the davidic covenant is also been alluded referred to close to 74 times in these prophetic messages now i want us to take a pause and think this day about the importance of covenant relationship between god and his people Similarly it's a reminder for us as we have entered into a covenant with God this day it is an invitation for us to recall the covenant that we have made with the Lord at any time if we have turned our back against God and broken the covenant this day the Lord is inviting us to repent to return and to remember because the god that we see in the bible he is a covenant keeping god and he is a faithful god and you always need to remember covenant is always involves two people and both the people have to be faithful to the covenant i will do this and you need to do this only when two people keep the covenant then only the covenant stands even if one person doesn't keep the basics of the covenant then the covenant is broken and that's what we see in the lives of the people of israel that time and again they broke the covenant they made with god and every time god looks at this people he looks with compassion and invites them to return to him so that the covenant will be restored I want you to remember as we look through the series of prophets one of the greatest invitation of God that you will see in the prophetic book is an invitation to the people for covenant restoration because God is a covenant keeping God and is a faithful God let me just quickly read uh, uh, a few verses for us this day uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 it says know therefore that the lord your god is god he is the faithful god keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generation of those who love him and keep his commandments the reason being the people have sinned people have fallen but the truth of the prophetic books and the messages god is a god of faithfulness he is god and is god all by himself and he invites us to be people who will keep the covenant and if you look at the prophetic messages it is an always an invitation for people to return from the sin starting from book of isaiah let me read isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 onwards this is what the lord says through isaiah he says come now let us settle the matter says the lord though your sins are like scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they are red as crimson they shall be like wool if you are willing and obedient you will eat the good things of the land you see the book of the prophets all the prophetic message revolves around this invitation from god inviting people to repent from the sins and you know what the beauty of god god forgives our sins and he forgets our sin as we read in psalm 103 he says 
he that he has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west he has removed our sins from us he never brings forth those sins but he forgets it and he forgives us and this day god is inviting us to repent he's inviting us to return if you have gone too far away from the lord he's inviting you this day would you return to him and finally in the midst of all those things that are happening around you in the midst of all those things that you have seen in this pandemic times you and i need to be reminded that god is still on the throne and he will definitely triumph over everything i want us to take some time to reflect as you heard me this day i want you to reflect if you look at the people of israel what separated them from god was sin and what brought this unity among the community was the sin as you read through the old testament scriptures and the new testament scriptures you will see god wants his people to flourish but sin destroys that community number 2 you see every time when people sin god time and again sends the prophets so that they will return to him because god never lets anyone go god always wants his people to return to him because god is a god who looks for relationship he is longing to be in relationship with you and he has been in that from the very time that he plays man and woman in the garden and whenever people of israel refuse to repent from the sin there is judgment however whenever people not just israel or any nation whenever they repented god forgave and blessed them there is always blessings there is always restoration if you repent and this day i want us to just apply this to ourselves if you and i are honest about our sins god is ready to forgive did you hear me if you and i are honest about our sins god is ready to forgive because god wants to show his faithfulness and justice to his people if today you and i repent god comes forth with his compassion and justice towards his people and you and i need to always understand god forgives everyone everyone who comes humbly confessing their sins god doesn't look at the size of your sin god looks at you and god accepts you as you are and he forgives you so this day i want us to place before us four important thoughts for us to reflect as we look at the prophetic book one important picture of god would come to you now what is that god is faithful and just and he is ready to forgive sins and he is ready to forgive sins see god is loving at the same time god is just because he is loving you know he doesn't close his eyes to the sins that you and i do and because he is just he doesn't stay away from showing his love to us he is both loving and just and this is beautifully explained on the cross through our lord jesus christ because he loved us so much that he stepped down from heaven and because our sins deserve a punishment a payment he gave his life upon the cross so that there is a ransom that is paid for our sins because without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sin he is loving and he is just are you able to understand this beautiful truth that is displayed to us upon the cross i want to ask this question to us god wants his people to thrive in a relationship with him at all times what does this 
reflect to you this day what does this reflect to you he always sends his prophets so that the relationship between god and his people will be restored does that really reveal to you the character of god a god who longs to be in relationship thirdly would you pause with me ask this question what is that sin in your life that has hindered relationship with god and with others if you need some time you can pause here and think about it can think about a sin that has stopped you right now from right relationship with god and others or is there any sin in the past that has really affected your relationship with god and people around you and if so do you need to change your course today do you need to apologize to someone today i want to invite you this day to be real with god i want you to be real about what you're going through because the three hours that i pointed out at the beginning of our session the mission of the prophets is an invitation for you to repent written and remember today would you repent and would you return to god and if you come he is waiting for you with his arms wide open would you return to him because he will ultimately triumph he is still on the throne thank you for listening and god bless you